good day and welcome back. So today we're in section three and what we're gonna do is implement a simple API server. Now the API server is just a web server. And so but the difference here is we're gonna implement um, some post, a post and a get method specific for the type of things we will need for our um, Angular application we have been working on. Remember, we have taken a break from that so we can work on the back end so we can come back after we learn how to do back end and tie the back end and the front end together. So today's exercise is going to be a direct follow on from what we previously did by doing a simple web server, showing that we can have client connect, do the get request, post and all these different types of requests. Now we're gonna just add something very simple to that and say, well, you know what? If we really wanted to do a API server, we have to be able to read the body that's post, you know, when you submit like your task, for example, to the server, how do you submit that? So far, we haven't done that. We've just shown the request path, the method in the request, and the headers in the request. As usual, we're gonna start where we left off in the previous section. So I'm gonna take that code, and I'm going to, again, run it and play with it, but then I'm gonna show you how we can update it to read the body. And then we'll continue by building on that to implement our API server. Okay, so we're gonna start, like I said, with the code from the last section. So this is the code we left off with the last section, which just print out the URL, the method, and the header So for the request. And then here is what it looks like when you exercise it. You know, you run the server, and then you send a request using um, curl. All right, so I'm gonna speed up this a little bit, which is using Firefox Mozilla to modify your request and monitor your request. And so you can slow it down or pause it, but basically I'm going to show you how to select pre first request, edit it, and then change the method type, which is, for example, here I'm doing post. I'm even going to put a JSON document in the request body, and I'm going to submit it, check it to the command line, and it's going to be the wrong content type because by default it's submitting it as text plain. I want to change that to application JSON. And this does us with the correct type for the content I'm sending, because I'm sending a JSON document. And that's very easy to do. Just go back, edit the request, the previous request. And in the header, you're going to set the content type to application forward slash JSON. And you resubmit it, and that's that. So now we know how to do get and post. We can either use curl, or we can use the command line. And now we are ready to start working on our next application. App 2 is very similar to App 1. And so the only change we're really going to make here is test for the method that is um, being used. And so in post and put method is when, and also patch method, is when you usually submit um, you know, a request body. You can do it also for get, by the way. But those are the ones we're going to use for submitting additional data JSON document is put and post. And so here I'm going to store the method in a variable. So it just makes it easy for me to reuse it. So I don't have to say request that method. I can just type method alone. And so I do that on line nine, but then on um, everything else, 11 through 14 is the same that we had before, which we paste, print out information about the request. But now I specifically only want to check for a body. Again, remember I can read a body or submit a body for any other one method. But in this example, I only want to read the body if it's a method put or a method post. So all I do here in line 16 is I check if the method is put or post, and then I register two callbacks. One of them, the first one you see in there on line 19, is a um, callback on the data event. So I'm gonna say that when there's an event called data, you call this callback. Now the next one is on line 23, and this is gonna be when the, all the data has been received, um, the node framework, node um, is infrastructure is gonna call this code saying, oh, this is the end of all the data. And at that point, since I have all the data, because if you look what I'm doing on line 20, every time I get the event data, I just add it to, um, the chunk that I got in my callback, I'm adding it to the body. So I just keep appending, appending, building it up. When I have, I get the event end, I know I have all the data. So at this point, since I'm expecting JSON, 
I can do json.parse, which we have used a number of times before in our Angular application. I can do json.parse that text, which is now a string, into a JavaScript object, which I call um, item, because I only expect to receive one item or task every, for each post, okay, or put. And so now if that's a valid um, Java object and it has the title, expected to have title, I can just print out the title. So we can test this out, um, run it and see what it looks like. And um, so the next screenshot is gonna show you what that looks like when you test it. So at this point, we kind of have enough to write our API server. We know to get the different type of requests. We know how to handle specific ones and we certainly know how to read a document. So let's write our API server with the capabilities we said. Okay, so let's start writing our API server here in um, application 03, app03.js. And so it's nice to put a little description at the top of our file so anybody who's reading it know what we're trying to do. So again, it's a simple Node.js API server which does the following. It accepts post requests to the API endpoint slash API slash task. Don't get confused by the old API endpoint. So we know that we are writing a, um, a place for you to submit and post request or get request. And those are usually called API endpoints, right? So you could think of a server exposing multiple endpoints. You know, so one might be slash API task and one might be slash um, API, you know, users or any number of things. So that's just an endpoint. So that's call it endpoint. And so what does our JSON document look like when we submit it? Well, it should have the title, uh, owner ID, and status as a string. And so status is optional, and so, and that's fine, right? And so that's our requirement here. Um, no, I'm not gonna do any validation. Like, I'm not gonna check and see, oh, if it doesn't have title, it's invalid. Like, we're not doing all those sort of processing. It's not that, uh, what I say? Uh, robust of an application. We're just trying to do the minimal to demonstrate the idea. The second thing we want to do is, of course, accept GET request. And when we get a GET request, we want to return all an array of JSON objects that were submitted or created, right, or posted. So at first, if you do a GET request, you should get an empty array. But if you post a valid task, you should be able to do a GET and get back an array of that. And so let's look at the rest of the code. So one of the first things I do uh, in terms of change from the previous code is on line 16, I create a constant to all my API endpoints so that I can easily test against it. And if I need to change that endpoint, I could just change one place. The next thing is, and you could do this in any order you want, but the first thing I'm going to do is say, if the request is not to the path I expect, then I'm going to return status code 401, which means not found. And I'm going to end this, re this request by, you know, saying there's an end on the response. And I'm going to return, which means I terminate this function. And that makes sense. You know, we expect this, um, something to come in on a particular path. If it doesn't come in on that path, we don't handle it. Next thing I want to do is check the method. Now, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter the order in which you do this, but it just seems that this seems like a natural order, that if the path is not what I expect, end it. Then if it is the path, then I want to check the method. If it's a get method, we know we support that. Call a function handle to handle this get re um, re method request and pass in the request and response so that that method have all the information it needs to do this and be able to respond. And then, of course, once the method responds, we end, and so we do respond here. And if it's a post, if it's not get, but it's a post, then again, you know, call a method to handle this. You can imagine the next part of this is going to be, if it's not get or post, then we don't handle this. So if you look on line 43 to 46, you'll see that, um, yes, if we don't have an unsupported method call, then we just lock some error and then we return. Now, same thing, line 50 and 52 has just been there that starts the server listening to our connection and accepting connections. Um, the new thing is on 55 where we have an array for our tasks that are submitted. And then we have the two functions, the handle get task and the handle post, which is below that. Between fifth, line 58 and 66, this is the function for handle get task. And what are we going to do is if it's a get, all we need to do is take our array of 
JSON task, stringify them, and then store that string, the JSON string, in a variable, and then we return that to the user. And again, we set the content type on line 64 to application JSON. And 200 OK, um, because there's no problem with this request. If we jump down now to the handle post task method, um, again, nothing new here other than what we saw in example two, which is if it's a post, we're going to try and get the body. And for that, on the request, we're going to register um, our data event handler. And so the on method there on the request is how you register an event. Now, um, I didn't get into it, but node request and response um, objects actually implement their event and stream API uh, module. So if you want to learn more about it, you can read it, um, node stream, um, event emitter, and streams. Um, but basically, um, for the request, since it implements streams, um, streams emit a data event and an end. And so um, we're going to register for those two events. And again, just as in the example, every time we get a call with data, we're going to append it to our body, which is a string. And then when we get the end event, we're going to parse that string into a JSON, um, a JSON string into a JavaScript object and add it to our database, print out some information about it, and then return to the client, not only 200 OK and application JSON, but we're going to send back a small JSON object with the ID of this newly added task. We have this implemented, we can start to play with it. So I'm going to start the server and I'm going to go request um, this from the slash API. We could see that's not found because we um, said in our ex code that if it's not the, it, the path we expect, then it should return not found. And of course, if I request from the path we expect, we haven't submitted anything yet, so um, we shouldn't expect to find, get anything. But now we can submit. Um, you know, a task and we can, that the response to the client, like we said, is a JSON object. But while I test this and you can look and you can see from the browser what those responses look like. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up so this is not too long a video. It's already 13 minutes. And so again, I hope you've learned something. I hope you enjoy the material so far. I hope you see that just by tacking on one new concept at a time, we've gone from not being able to do anything pretty much with Node.js to being able to read a JSON file in the first section of this chapter seven to in chapter in section two, we were able to write a simple web server. And now in section three, we're able to write an API server that both handles post and get request. And so again, thanks for joining. I hope you're learning. I hope you enjoy the material. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, spread the word post question or comments. Take care. Bye.